This week, President Biden tweeted out his own major announcement, listing his latest string of political wins from inflation easing to gas prices falling. But look at the latest poll numbers, and Biden is still underwater, with his job approval rating stuck in the mid-40s. This morning, I got a chance to talk with the president's senior advisor in public engagement, Keisha Lance Bottoms, about Biden's 2023 agenda and how he plans to handle the new Republican-led House. Keisha Lance Bottoms, a senior advisor to the president on public engagement, welcome back to The Sunday Show. Thank you for having me. So before we get to the president's agenda for 2023, I want to ask you about, uh, start with some immediate news. As we all know, Title 42 expires on Wednesday. Is the administration ready for the increase in the influx of migrants at the southern border? Yes, Jonathan, the administration has been preparing for months for the end of Title 42. And what people have to remember is that this does not mean that our borders will suddenly be open. Title 42 was a public health emergency order. Um, and now that Title 42 is coming to an end, then we will go back to Title 8. And what Title 8 provides for is a process to make sure that people who are legally presenting themselves at the border uh, who are seeking to come into the United States have a process by which they can avail themselves of our immigration system. But what we need, uh, we need Republicans and Democrats in Congress together to make sure that we have the funding in place uh, to make sure that the resources are available. President Biden uh, has long talked about the need for immigration reform. He is calling on Republicans in Congress to make sure that the $3 billion that's being asked for to make sure that the resources are available so that there's not a burden on these communities uh, where people are crossing in are in place so that people can be processed and that they can avail themselves of an immigration system that we have said is available in our country. And to add a, a, an exclamation point on what you just said, El Paso, Texas, um, has declared a state of emergency to allow them to allow that city to avail themselves of resources to deal with the influx of migrants in their city. So, um, Mayor Bottoms, let's talk about the president's agenda for 2023. What's uh, at the top of the president's agenda, and how likely is it that the president will be able to move through that agenda with Republicans in control of the House? Well, as you know, Jonathan, President Biden has long prided himself on being able to work across party lines. Thus far, he signed 200 bipartisan bills into law. Many of those in Congress, Republican members of Congress uh, who voted along with uh, the president's policies, were reelected. So it really um, works in favor of all of the American people for us to work together. And we know that's what people want us to do. The president will continue to deliver for families across America. He will continue to lean in on making sure that our economy is solid and making sure that manufacturing jobs are being brought back to the United States and making sure that families are able to access health care, that they are able to access employment, that they are able to receive whatever relief and support they need from this administration to make their lives better. And it is our hope that this will be done in a a bipartisan way, because we know as we look at polling, that's what people across America are asking for, and that's what they are electing people to go to Congress to do, to work together to make sure that the lives of people across this country are better. All right. And so, I mean, I hear what you're saying. Um, and also, on top of that, the president arguably has had a successful year, given all the legislation that's been passed this year, as you pointed out, also the midterm election results not being nearly as dire, not dire at all, for Democrats as predicted. And yet the president's approval rating is still stubbornly low, still in the 40s, low 40s. How's the president going to get those numbers up? Why aren't the numbers going up? Jonathan, I think people have to remember it's been a really tough time in our country and across the globe. 
we came out of a pandemic, and this was a term that began with an insurrection at our nation's capital. So understandably, uh, things have been a bit unsettled over the past few years. All that being said, uh, the president works on behalf of the people, not on behalf of approval ratings. He will continue to do the job that he was elected to do. He will continue to do the things that he promised the American people he would do if he were elected president. And and that's to keep our families and our communities top of mind each and every day. And we've seen that he's delivered um, from the bipartisan infrastructure bill that's um, made sure that there's money going into our communities to improve our road rate, what our roadways, our sidewalks, our bridges. We know that we have crumbling infrastructure in this country to bringing manufacturing jobs back home, to providing student debt relief, to making sure that insulin prices are capped, prescription prescription drug prices are capped. He has done uh, an, an exceedingly good job in delivering for the American people, despite the challenges that he inherited when he was sworn in as president. And he'll continue uh, to do that over um, into the next year and beyond. Uh, last question for you, and we literally have less than 30 seconds left. Um, if Kevin McCarthy does succeed in his quest to become the next Speaker of the House, Republican Speaker of the House, can the president work with him? Does the president have a relationship with him? The question is, will Kevin McCarthy work with the president? The president is willing to work with anyone uh, who's willing to work with him to get things done on behalf of the American people. He wants to work with the Republican leadership in Congress, whomever it may be.